have two sons, ten and four. Mm. Both of them talk about sustainability. It's not because their dad is into sustainability, <laughs> but I see a lot of their friends. When I see my kids or I see the generation that they are in, I think it's super high. Yeah. World will be much better when our kids actually grow up. Yeah. Uh, they they are going to do a much better job than than what uh, perhaps we have been doing. From studying to become a petroleum engineer to now heading businesses that pioneer green energy, Anmol Singh Jaggi, co-founder of Blue Smart, has had such an interesting journey. In this episode, he takes us through it all, from being a forgy kid to taking the risk of entrepreneurship, balancing passion and work with his business, promoting renewable energy to empowering more women. Stay tuned; it's quite a ride. Welcome to the Humans of Bombay show, Anmol. So lovely to have you. and uh, so glad you could make it from delhi <laughs> my, my pleasure i think uh, <laughs> a lot of people have told me that uh, karishma has a very unique way of asking very softer aspects of <laughs> the business and the personality so i thought uh, it'll be a good one let's hope uh, yeah. i prove them right in the in the following few minutes um so i want to start with a, a very um interesting pivot right that happened in your early life like you're a you're a forgy kid yeah. uh, i assume you've traveled uh, quite a bit in your formative years uh, and then you went into entrepreneurship and are obviously very passionate about a subject like uh, the environment and sustainability so three very different um, buckets so to speak so can you walk me through some of the experiences that you had uh, while growing up and how these events kind of unfolded yeah so i think being a forgy kid is a privilege uh, yeah. you know your your dad works uh, hard uh, and he's always under the threat but i think kids have a very good time courtesy the cantonments are very good yeah. uh, you get to have a lot of facilities in the cantonment so it's it's a good place to be in mm. uh, but yes uh, you are very well disciplined i think uh, being a forgy kid uh, helped us in two three ways number one uh, it was uh, discipline number 2 you see so many parts of the country so we've seen the northern part eastern part uh, western southern every part of the country made so many friends dealt with so many people uh, saw so many cultures so so it's 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 been good and by the way that's helped a lot because um, and and i'll just jump to something which is that i we belong to chandigarh but all my business was built at ahmedabad right and we moved lock stock barrel our business to ahmedabad because we never had the fear of moving out hmm. uh, you could we were very accustomed to say that we are at place a today and place b tomorrow yeah. uh, so so that's what uh, being a forgy kid taught us so happy and very proud to be a son of an army officer hmm. and how did your uh, taste for entrepreneurship happen Yep. So for entrepreneurship, I think uh, the whole idea was that uh, my dad always said create options. So uh, while I was at college, he told me. By the way, uh, there is another very uh, unique part of my life, which is I graduated as a petroleum engineer. Oh wow! So okay. I, I absolute opposite end yeah. of uh, <laughs> of the carbon spectrum, if yeah, I can say. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, so grew up as a uh, or graduated as a petroleum engineer, mm. uh, but uh, always always interested in entrepreneurship, uh, always interested in doing something new, and and uh, I think uh, dad said get me a admission letter to a great MBA college. get me a job offer and prove me that you can be a good entrepreneur so uh, i think i tried to do all of it uh, mm -hmm. and uh, i was placed with british gas uh, so that was good i got a admission to a decent mba college that was good but while i was in my third and fourth year of college i started gensol which mm -hmm. is the renewable energy business that we have and uh, that 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 was doing flourishingly well and i was able to convince my very logical dad that uh, it, it that you know i'll be i'll be good as an entrepreneur yeah and how did a petroleum engineer <laughs> land up uh, being so passionate about renewable energy and sustainability um how did that pivot happen the more i saw about petroleum the less the more i knew that i don't want to do it okay so so, so let's talk about that yeah. what what about petroleum Yeah, so petroleum is a, is is world's largest industry. Yeah. Uh, it it contributes a lot. I think the whole movement happens uh, because of petroleum. But we also saw that uh, when we were studying, we also saw the amount of uh, bad that it does. Mm. Uh, the amount of uh, during drilling, during extraction, during refining, during transportation, uh, so much of uh, so much of chemicals. emissions etc which happened during that process by the way i did my internship at reliance industries mm. and at reliance industries my job was to sell gas 
and there when i was doing my internship i got to know of a concept called carbon credits hmm. that if you can save on carbon emissions uh, the government will pay you or the united nations will pay you and that hooked me on and said that uh, uh, and and we created a tagline for ourselves it said it pays to be environment friendly <laughs> so so carbon credit was paying you for being environment friendly yeah. and i picked it up as a concept in my third year i did my big project on the carbon credits and from there uh, started my entrepreneurship journey but it was always about the fact that being very close to the petroleum industry i just realized that how far i want to be from there yeah that's so interesting because uh, sometimes you have to do what you don't want to realize that that's not what i want uh, you know? maybe good analogy yeah, yeah that's a good one <laughs> um so let's talk a little bit about sustainability and uh, you know how important it is as a overarching blanket topic so let's talk about uh renewable energy and uh sustainability especially in the indian context um uh, like do you think that there is awareness do you think that um enough is being done so uh, awareness uh, from where we were a decade ago yeah. i graduated 2007 mm -hmm. uh, to decade and a half earlier to now i think the awareness is 100x more yeah uh, i i have two sons 10 and 4 mm. both of them talk about sustainability it's not because their dad is into sustainability <laughs> but i see a lot of their friends when i see my kids or i see the generation that they are in i think it's super high yeah. super high uh, saving plastic emissions i think uh, i think we, uh, the world will be much better when our kids actually grow up yeah. uh, they they are going to do a much better job than than what uh, perhaps we have been doing mm. uh, so are we doing enough I think we are doing much more than what we were doing earlier but can it still be done better of course yeah. yes renewable energy is today 10 12% of india india's total energy consumption can it go to 100% it can go to 100% we have today all technology means capital available to get it to 100% you tried your first ev <laughs> uh, yeah. a few weeks back weeks so back, so yeah. uh, people are changing yeah um so let's let's get into you know the specifics and the the numbers because uh you know for the people watching uh it could be so important to put emissions in the context of what can um obviously the vehicle emissions which contribute largely to the pollution we were discussing earlier even global warming um what is it uh, ver versus each other right one where it's an ev and the other where it's a normal vehicle like just for context so that people understand so i'll i'll say uh, if uh, you have to pick up a internal combustion engine on diesel hmm. uh, then you have to pick up a ev which is powered by fossil fueled fired power plants and then there is ev which comes from renewable energy hmm. ev which comes ev which is powered through renewable energy zero emissions yes no emissions yeah. there ev which comes from fossil fueled uh, powered emissions is half of diesel correct so if a diesel car emits 100 kg of carbon dioxide uh, ev powered by fossil fuel fired power plants would contribute 50 kg and of course with renewable will be zero hmm. but this is not just the only emissions that we should talk about we should also talk about a very important emissions which is called pm 2.5 and pm 5 electric vehicles whether fossil fuel fired or electric vehicles fired through renewable energy produce zero pm 2.5 and zero pm 5 Mm. there is no particulate matter we don't have a tail pipe mm. there is no tail pipe emission which is happening so that pm 2.5 and pm 5 is zero so the contribution to air quality index by electric vehicles is zero and if you look at it global warming is a big issue and we all need to tackle that but on a very local level it's the aqi which spoils the lungs of the people of the small children etc and on that electric vehicle scores a 10 on 10 Mm -hmm. so it is important to look at it from a carbon carbon emission perspective it is very important to look at it from a particulate matter emissions perspective right. and and pm 2.5 and pm 5 we are 10 on 10 yeah. on the on the, on the fact of carbon if we are through a fossil and india today 70% of all power generation in the country is fossil fuel yeah. so we are doing slightly better but uh, but when it turns to 100% renewable is when we will go to zero emissions today mm -hmm. you cannot call electric mobility as zero emissions today correct it is zero tailpipe emissions which mm -hmm. means that we do not contribute towards particulate matter but towards carbon dioxide there is a certain emission which happens and um, you know when when it comes to 
adopting the EV? What are the kind of numbers that you have seen? Uh, you know, are people um, in terms of trends, right? Like, do they now gravitate towards buying a EV, or is it still a threshold that needs to be broken? Very surprisingly, yeah. the change on EV is happening from bottom of the pyramid. Okay. Right. So today, about 20% of all two-wheelers sold in the country are electric. But only 2% of cars sold are electric. Hmm. So uh, it is clearly because EVs are also very economical. Yeah. Uh, the fossil co- the, the cost of running an EV per kilometer, whether it's a two-wheel, three-wheel, four-wheel, any form factor is much cheaper. Hmm. So because the bottom of the pyramid is is very cost conscious, right. uh, they are they are the drivers of EV adoption when it comes. And I think uh, in the next three, four years, they will turn to almost 100 percent EV, very except for the luxury form of motorcycle, the Royal Enfields or the Harley Davidson's <laughs> uh, of the world. When it comes to cars. Uh, the adoption is still slower, hmm. but it started to happen. I, I think uh, people uh, now see a lot of more cars on the road, uh, at least in areas where we operate, people see thousands of blue smarts on the road. So so I think that that creates a lot of adoption. More than that, I think hmm. uh, what I'm extremely proud of is that so many millions of people, their first experience with EV has been in one of our cars. Yeah. So, so that's actually a, a good one because uh, they ask the driver partner of uh, how's the experience with the EV, what is the range, what is the cost, is it giving any maintenance issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All their FAQs hmm. are kind of get solved by the driver partner. So, so that creates a lot of adoption for uh, EVs, and hence, uh, you know, at least in areas uh, of Delhi where we operate and Bangalore where we operate, you see a very high EV adoption. Right, understood. So, you know, coming to Blue Smart, uh, you launched this in four years ago when right. the EV movement was not as aggressive as it would probably right. be today. Right. Um, so what made you take the risk? So uh, I've always been in a believer in believing slightly early in technologies. Right. We got into solar in 2012. <laughs> At that time, people did not believe solar. Yeah. We got into EVs in 2019 when people did not believe in EVs. Mm. So our always thought process has been to be slightly ahead of the curve. Uh, as entrepreneurs, if you are uh, not slightly ahead of the curve, you will get lost in because uh, when a technology kind of peaks, then everybody wants to get into that technology. Mm. So in a couple of years from now, everybody will talk only EVs. But you have to, if you want to establish yourself as an entrepreneur, as a businessman, you have to be slightly ahead of the curve. Start investing at the right time. So we clearly knew that electric, just like solar, uh, that cost will continue to fall technology will continue to improve. At least my entrepreneurship skill or sense told me that I should enter slightly early. So we started 2019. Yeah, so I'm going to make a little bit of a pivot uh, from Blue Smart to more generic entrepreneurial advice sure. here. You said, uh, you know, stay ahead of the curve uh, because what's the point once it's already a penetrated product or service? Uh, for entrepreneurs watching, how is it that they can aspire to be ahead of the curve? I would suggest to entrepreneurs is that you have to look at some of the very solid mega trends which are going to happen. For example, today people say artificial intelligence is a mega trend. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to start doing something today. You cannot say that once it will become mainstream is when I get into that. Mm -hmm. Mainstream is for large companies. Large companies can come and announce when a product becomes mainstream that we will enter. As a startup, you have to start slightly early. So when you did enter the market, uh, what are some of the challenges you faced? Because the year was very unique. It was 2019. Yeah. Uh, 2020, uh, a huge chunk of it, public transport stopped. Right. Uh, you were in lockdown. The country was in lockdown. Uh, so what are some of the challenges that you faced? Well, survival was a challenge. Yeah. Uh, so 2019, we started 6 December 2019. Uh, exactly in 100 days, which is around 20th of March 2020, is when the country got into a lockdown. And uh, it was business went to zero. Uh, we were a small business at that time. Uh, so the business went absolutely to zero. But uh, thankfully, we had a lot of uh, good investors backing us up. So they showed confidence and said, uh, maybe this situation lasts for a year or, or less than a year or more than a year. But we believe the concept. We believe that uh, we believe that electric mobility will be a success, and hence we are ready to keep on uh, backing you up. Mm-hmm. So it is not just courtesy our own belief, but uh, what they so call as angel investors, yeah. who are truly your angels, who who look after you in times of dire needs. But it, there was also an opportunity in that. The opportunity in that was that we had seen our business run for about hundred odd days. 
so we knew where we were failing so i think it was uh, overall for the humanitarian cause covid was extremely bad but from a blue smart perspective we were able to do a lot of good things sitting at home uh, for 3 4 months and building out the product at that time understood uh, so let's talk a little bit of numbers you said you know you were, you were smaller back then yeah. uh, so how did you initially begin what was your fleet size uh, when we you started began? with 70 cars 70 70 right. and uh, very interestingly we started on the uber platform Okay. So it started off with that, and uh, by the time sixth of December happened, we had created our own app, and Blue Smart came into existence at that time, mm -hmm. and we were extremely surprised of why would somebody use us. But on sixth of December, we saw forty two people using us on that day. Wow. So very happy, and we had a bet in our office that what would be the name of the first person. <laughs> who who would actually use our car and there was a lady called Mahima who happened to be our first user ever wow. so yeah you'll always remember that of course of course of so uh, what's the fleet size today so we are north of 5000 cars now wow north of 5000 cars so and uh, 5000 evs 5000 all between electric delhi and bangalore between delhi and bangalore uh, to put it in context uh, this would be the largest all electric fleet anywhere in the world wow. on a single platform and uh, Do you find that people are now consciously making that choice, right? That I will come to Blue Smart because I'm making the more conscious decision. Yeah. So how we try to project it is we tell our consumers you're doing your good deed of the day. How do you do that? Do so you communicate your good that? deed of the day is open the Blue Smart app, book a cab. <laughs> <laughs> You've done your good deed of the day, and we let you know at the end of the day of how much carbon dioxide you have saved. And do you have any idea of uh, how much carbon emission you would have put would have saved in? the years it's it's in uh, exact numbers would be a few million kgs of carbon dioxide wow yeah. that's amazing uh, at least north of 10 million kgs of carbon dioxide that's amazing and yeah. you've um, obviously built this business on a very wholesome front right but what was also very interesting to me was that 37% of your drivers are female right um was that a conscious decision because uh, i know that You know, every time you see a driver who's a woman, I automatically feel like, oh wow, because it's rare. You right. don't see it that right. often. Thirty-seven percent is is large. Right. So, was there a conscious decision? Of course, it was conscious, ma'am. So, uh, when we hmm. started the business, we said we are going to have three principles: people, planet, and prosperity. So, people comes actually ahead of planet in our in our value systems. People meant. Getting a lot of women, hmm. and and one of our investors actually taught me. It said that. Uh, you should mirror your workforce as per your customers hmm. so if you have 30 50% of women customers you should try to have 50% women drivers you should have 50% women in your team also if you can mirror your customer to your team that is where when you are able to create products which the customers like correct when we spoke to when we spoke to the a lot of these women customers we came to know about their issues in the sense that uh, so uh, the biggest cohort of users on blue smart is what we call as young moms okay. young moms are uh, and in our category is ladies in the age of 25 to 35 most of their use cases were like small stop use cases hmm. uh, they want to stop 2 minutes to drop uh, the kid to the crèche pick them back school run a small errand etc so we created a specific product for this kind of cohort which is the young women cohort and and that's a super hit product and and i can tell you the amount of uh, repeat business that we get from this cohort is super amazing yeah. in fact a lot of our investors uh, uh, are so proud that how are you able to get so much of repeat business from the, from this cohort it's also good to see a lot of women driver partners that we have and on the other side uh, on the women driver partner mm. i have mm. to say this that it's been actually super tough to convince women to come and drive yeah. super tough very very tough what was the what was the hesitation i, I, I think it's more to do with families mm. uh, uh, just to give you a stat if we train six women to get a driving license only one ends up joining us really but i think i think there is a there is huge amount of pressure uh, that these women driver partners have from their homes of not to work huge and have you found that there's been any kind of uh, uh hesitation because of the cliche women can't drive and it's the it's the opposite really it's it's absolutely the opposite yeah in our uh, again i can maybe provide data to you also yeah. in terms of number of accidents in terms of uh, in terms of number of uh, uh, dents or uh, body damage that the car gets in terms of customer satisfaction 
I, I think women are two women driver partners are two notches above the men driver partner. Wow. So so it's it that cliche is wrong. Uh, <laughs> that cliche is absolutely wrong. We have data to prove that women actually perform better on the road. Yeah, uh, that's amazing. So I'm going to go into a little bit of you know the overarching uh, journey, right? Like your you've scaled during COVID. You've gone from 70 cars to 5,000 cars. You have such a strong purpose, such a strong mission. You you're also very gender inclusive, and you're trying to push that on. like you mentioned um what advice would you give young entrepreneurs watching this on how to really run a mindful business like you are because it's not like you're not making money you're you're prof you're, you're making that 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 revenue right. you're not a for profit uh, a non for profit yeah. um but you still have these strong value systems and pillars so can you talk a little bit about what it takes to build that kind of a business I think listen to your heart I have always believed in whatever we are doing mm. so I have always believed for renewable energy I have always believed in inclusivity so it's not something that I had to learn uh, to say that uh, or somebody taught me in a B school to say follow di- follow diversity or follow inclusivity I think it's it's just comes uh, very normally mm. uh, just except for the fact that uh, one of our investors like I mentioned told us that mirror your yeah, customer mirror, yeah. mirror your customer That's actually very good advice uh, you also spoke about retention right like people come back to your app they come back to use your services uh, what are your two cents on uh, retention because so many businesses face that as a challenge you know like how do i keep getting that repeat customer so right. what are your two cents on that no, great service that's it uh, yeah. great service affordable price uh, uh, you have to continue to do that and uh, and it's and, and as you become larger in size it's much tougher to do that and and you have to just have a very strong principled uh, organization and and by the way the army culture helps in that yeah army is 11 lakh people extremely disciplined so i keep asking myself we have 6 7000 driver partners why can't we keep them disciplined mm. or when we scale in size to 25 50000 driver partners why can't we keep them in why can't we keep them disciplined yeah that's a good analogy and i feel like uh, you know when you when you have that discipline it allows for quality control uh, yeah. because for you especially in a business where you're responsible for somebody right who sits in your car it's so important to have that that level of quality very tough business ma'am extremely yeah. <laughs> tough business we touch so many lives every day it's a very high human contact business yeah. thousands and thousands of people sit in our cars every day every time the car needs to smell nicely every time the driver needs to behave nicely uh, you are on you are on the indian road indian road is also has road rage incidents you have to be careful about that yeah. uh, there is women safety around there you, you you have to think about a lot and let's talk a little bit about competition you know like you mentioned uh, the, uh, it's uh, india's population alone demands that there are many players right. and giants right? right like uber for example or Uber Green which is uh, their sustainability uh, initiative within the Uber ecosystem how have you remained afloat uh, and thriving when when you're competing with stalwarts uh, who have established themselves maybe not in the green space but overall as public mobility i think the whole genesis of why we started was that our competition was not able to satisfy customers fully right so uh, in in our research of when we were trying to say why will people use blue smart we just came to a simple analogy a simple thought that zero cancellation zero search price zero emissions mm, so very interesting zero cancellations blue smart doesn't cancel if you book a car you get a car zero search price we believe search pricing is a very unfair way of treating your customer just because it rained we should not charge you three times what's the customer's fault if it rained yeah so so we should not be unfair to our uh, customer and number 3 zero emissions hmm. so these were the founding tenets of blue smart and i think uh, while our competition is doing great uh, but we have been able to gather a market share for ourselves you know i find it uh, so interesting that you know a lot of these things that you mention are so succinct but to the point like you know with your zero or even hmm. like people planet uh, i forget the third prosperity one. prosperity and, and and on that prosperity is very important ma'am yeah. because like you mentioned we did not we do not want to be a not for profit yeah you can only scale large if you are for profit hmm. correct you you cannot scale large if you are not creating wealth for your shareholders if you are not creating wealth for the team if you are not creating wealth for your driver partners for the full ecosystem otherwise you will just be remaining on grants and grants can only take you to a certain extent correct. it's only when it's a for profit organization is when you can scale to large extents amazing okay so we'll bust some myths right because sure. um Uh, people have this notion about uh, electric cars especially so we'll bust some myths 
people often think that EVs are slower compared to normal cars. Uh, is that true? Tesla Plaid is the fastest car in the world. <laughs> it can beat a Ferrari. It can beat any car. Yeah. So the EV EVs are not slow for sure. In fact, you have to be careful because they accelerate very fast. Oh really? Okay. Okay. Many think that EVs get damaged in waterlogged areas and are dangerous to charge in the rain. Is Older that true? technology, yes. Newer technology, no. Okay. Many doubt the security of the EVs. Are EVs less secure than other cars? Like, Not they at just all. Break down randomly, you know. <laughs> no, they don't break down randomly. Uh, see, there a lot of this has been over the technological age of the business. So hmm. EVs are young. Uh, so. in the older technology older technology is also not very old i'm talking of 2017 2018 yeah. 2019 older technology yes there were breakdowns but today the cars are fairly good uh, i think uh, we hardly see any breakdowns at blue smart as we speak and we operate a decently large fleet so yeah. there are very few breakdowns yeah uh, another question that comes up fairly often is where do i charge so yeah. if you could provide uh, you know some kind of stats on charging stations related to the no, it's the, it's the single largest constraining factor on the growth of electric mobility in the country uh, so we've tried a lot to build our, a lot of charging station for ourselves uh, and now we are also going to open it up for public hmm. so uh, we blue smart operates the largest electric vehicle charging infrastructure in the country and we are going to open it up to public in the coming month and there a lot of citizens of delhi ncr and bangalore will now be able to charge their cars at blue smart uh, charging infrastructure mm -hmm. so i think that should boost a lot of electric mobility but uh, electric charging infrastructure is for sure a very large bottleneck it is a bottleneck it is a bottleneck yeah. so how would a typical say i buy an ev car yeah. how would i charge it like where where do i go yep so uh, i think uh, for bombay or for other places there are enough number of charging stations which have which have which have started to come but uh, it is is it still like as available as gas. as gas not there right. but fairly okay but the old, but let me tell you ma'am i have uh, from last 4 years i've only driven a electric car i own no ice car i don't sit in an ice car <laughs> yeah so uh, so uh, I, i i absolutely till the time it's not like mandatory mandatory to come in an ice car i yeah. i don't i don't do that hmm. uh, but i what i've seen is that uh, for my even for my own home car it is easily 400 km range car 400 km is like one week it takes me one full week to drive 400 km so it doesn't take that much uh, courtesy a lot of charging infrastructure which we have built and otherwise it's fairly easy to charge mm. uh, so it's not been a very difficult uh, journey uh, i think i think it's becoming easier every day right amazing so we're down to our last question um you know you've uh, scaled from 70 to 5000 and that's just in two cities right yeah. uh, and this is a revolution waiting to happen obviously because india is so large and like you mentioned um especially cost effective yeah. um so what are the growth plans in terms of scale uh, where next and uh, uh, advice to budding entrepreneurs so we'll do it in two sections uh, the first we'll we'll talk about blue smart and the the plan to scale So Blue Mam uh, will operate in mm -hmm. all the major metro cities. Will operate in the larger cities of Pune, ha Pune and Hyderabad and Bangalore, which are not the metro cities but very large cities in itself. I think seventy, eighty percent market ride hail market is in these six, seven cities. Yeah. So you will see us operating in these six, seven cities. Uh, timeline not yet defined. We just want to concentrate on what we do best, which is Delhi and Bangalore. So. for the foreseeable future we are only present in these two cities and not coming to bombay also <laughs> uh, but uh, but yes uh, we will be expanding to all of them we do have some international plans so we will also go international mm -hmm. and uh, we on, in terms of advice to budding entrepreneurs i would say uh, follow your heart first principles keep customers happy keep your shareholders happy and and you will be happy <laughs> so so don't uh, don't try to do too many fancy things uh, and and uh, great customer service great product great wealth creation for your shareholders you're sorted keep it simple keep it simple yeah. amazing thank you so much anman i learned a lot i yeah. genuinely was interested because so many of these questions i was like yeah that's that's actually a yeah. good question so thank you for answering and uh, i hope your movement spreads everywhere because it's so important thanks karishma pleasure to be on the show thank you yeah. thank you for being the best community and we'll see you in the next one